bit to go in the top, I think. Yeah, yeah. Where the little yeah. Yeah. they need cutting yeah. off and peeling when they're happy, it's all it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. New seals have arrived, so Norman and the team have been able to reassemble the oleo. I think it's a good one. So what we've got, what we've got here then, Norman? What we've got yeah. is the charging ring. When it came to testing, things didn't quite go to plan. You, you, you pressurise the system and there's no way of depressurising it. There's no way to let the pressure off to return the hydraulic fluid to the sump of the hydraulic charging rig. Is the red fluid in there, the hydraulic fluid? Yeah. yeah. Was it helpful at all, this rig? Yeah. Yeah, it's got Shirena valve in the top of there. Yeah. Was that in? When yeah, you, yeah, yeah. yeah. And couldn't you release that valve then uh, to release the pressure? Yeah, but, that, but, it, but then it wasn't going back to here. I, could, I couldn't get anything back to here because I couldn't, I couldn't open anything on there no. to release it. So I was stuck at 1200 PSI on there and on the turn adapter and I couldn't release the pressure in any way without undoing the main lines and making a mess. So now you're off to BBMF sometime. Some, sometime to now tomorrow. Yeah. Get, get grief all over the place. This part fits in the top of the oleo, leaving the boss protruding. When the rear wheel assembly is fitted to the aircraft, the boss fits into the flexible bearing which is situated in the middle of the top joining two halves of the tailplane. I made, made a new skin for that. It's just been cleaned up, ready for paint. But this is the when Dave flips down NX611 OEO box, there's a the crack in the same area as KB976 OEO just an airline crack at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Or is it a bit more? Well, it's, going it's gone, right, gone right through, but then it'd be nice to know why it's happening. And, you know. Yeah. The others, I think KB976, they were worse than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Figure out what can be saved and what can't. This is the same part from KB976, a lot worse, but cracking in the same area. Whereabouts was it then? Um, what, no, they were really yeah. bent in yeah, yeah, yeah. But they didn't know whether that at the time was yeah. the hanger coming down on it. Might have been, yeah. Or I've been, been in touch with Jim in Canada and they've, had a look at they've, they've got some like strengthening plates on there, so they may, it's either a mod or a repair they've had done to this. So. Yeah. Oh, so maybe, maybe it is a common fault with them. Yeah. It's good, it's, we find things out by taking it apart, don't we? So, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's a good thing to highlight. Keith's pressing on with the French wing fitting the surround to the number two fuel tank bay. Also fitting stringers. Some of the stringers require a new section and joining to the original one. The lower half of the skins are skin pinned into place. Morning, Keith. Morning. Ned wants to know why you can't fit this to your wing. Hey? Ned wants to know why you can't fit this to your wing. I said, yeah, you'll explain. <laughs> <laughs> he said, don't mention to Keith about the, the uh, door tank for panel. tank panel. <laughs> This panel Keith is working on is for the outside fuel tank bay, the cover panel. I believe this is for the starboard wing. The one they want is for the port side wing.
Those of you who received the Rivet Club email written by Andrew, 193 I believe it is, may have read the paragraph on number 3 fuel tank bay cover or door panel. I will read it to you. The number 3 fuel tank panel however is a problem. The only number 3 tank panel that the French have is the starboard side as opposed to the required port panel. We have removed number 3 port panel from NX611 to see if it lines up with NX664 but it's sadly a long way off from fitting. If anyone out there has a port number 3 fuel tank panel that we can borrow for a season, please let me know. Anybody who's watching this video knows where they may borrow a number 3 fuel tank bay, please contact Andrew. Solid job. The centre has received this nose section from France, off NX664. This will be made good, a few skins need a repair and replacing. And later on fitted to just Jane, while the restore Jane's to airworthy condition. I asked Brad after receiving a comment which was the quickest method to fit the Merlin block, Rolls Royce or Packard? They both take as long as each other really. Yeah, not a lot, no. And it's not as fiddly as it looks. No. Work cannot proceed on the rear fuselage of NX611 till they receive the upgrade for the jig. In then? Yeah. Doing the formers. Oh. And that's one of what the formers for, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Started on the foot, you got all the skins done now. Yeah, as far as I can go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, can't go any further. Now you're starting on the formers. Yeah. Oh, they are. Um, Leveled up for strength. Yeah. 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 Done, done form is yeah. Dennis has been working on the trailing edge from the French wing. He has stripped it down completely. He's replicated all the skins, now starts on the formers, having to make wooden formers from the original metal formers to produce new formers. This will be a completely new trailing edge. Yeah. And there you wouldn't form us to yeah. turn the edges anyway. One, yeah, one on, one on here and one on the back face. Yeah. Bolted through. But That's two, right, you bolt them through. Two fixed holes there. Yeah. I've got some bolts and then mm. bolt it together. Yeah. <coughs> and it's a straight tap over, there's no curve in it at all. There's a slight contour on oh, it. There's a slight contour, this is top side, see? Yeah. Slight contour on it. You can hardly see it where it is there. Yeah. And this is flat at the bottom, but the more it comes inboard, the more the bottom starts to go like that. Oh, does it? Yeah. Yeah. All skin trims now fitted around the tailplane. I'm not sure whether these joints will be sealed with dope and sesonite. Since my last visit, Norman has been to BBMF. The tail wheel helio is now being pressurised and has been fitted to just Jane.
also fitted the wheel and the anti-shimmer damping system. The rear wheel oleo passes between the two halves of the tailplane in the centre of the rear fuselage. Yeah, oh yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So the, so the top of the, uh, the leg sits in there? It's not bolted in there in any way, no. so it's just a locator. Just with the four yeah. bolts, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good, thank you. And then, there's the, uh, This is the hydraulic shimmy damper fitted to the rear wheel. at the top and between the two halves of the tailplane. You can just see the boss protruding through the bearing. So if you want to see yeah. the pin through the leg, you'll have yeah. to go down to You can see the pin in the housing and the locking bolts holding it in place. The leg of the rear wheel oleo is covered with polythene. This is only to protect the paintwork while they were fitted. Is there another hole the other side or not? No, really. Right, that's okay. as well have you? Yes. Are they off the Lancaster or? They're off Spanish Heinkel. Oh. But they they were Lancaster power plants so they should fit. Yeah. We'll fit these and then we can have, leave ours off and restore them. Yeah. Yeah. And these will be kept for a spare set anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I was more emotional before it started in the world actually when, when it did look, you know, the actors tonight, you know, when I'm, when I'm in bed. You know. <laughs> 